Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Brog, episode number 77. I'll be your host. My name is Adam Josh, and today I wanted to talk about artificial intelligence. So pull up a chair if you dare, and we will cover the topic of AI as best as uh, I'm able. Uh, today is today is the 25th of December 2011 on the Greco-Roman calendar and I'm not a Roman or a Catholic so to me it's just another uh, day on the calendar the Sun is get us getting noticeably uh, shorter in days so I guess naturally it would be reborn around this time of year. We could call it the solstice or the sun stop, but I wouldn't make an entire religion uh, over it or uh, later try to rename it the uh, <coughs> birthday of, uh, of a messianic character, but that's me, you know? You can, you can do whatever you want today and I'll do whatever I want. I had a uh, good time with my mom earlier today pick her out for lunch. That was fun. We wanted to talk about AI, not about my, my mom. I got this uh, hat and I got another one here. Uh, like a toque. I went out and bought these. Uh, well, this one was given to me uh, <clears throat> yesterday and this one I bought when John was down for two ninety nine from the dollar store. What do you think? Anyway, so we wanted to talk about AI. Um, I don't know if those of you watching will know much about um, artificial intelligence. Uh, you may remember the movie AI uh, by, I think uh, AI, Steven Spielberg had his hand in that, didn't he? And so, but functional AI, functional artificial intelligence is now mainstream. And that's, artificial intelligence is the future. I mean, whether you like it or whether I like it, it is the future. So functional artificial intelligence is now online. Uh, and one of the ways you can go check this out for yourself is go to cleverbot.com c-l-e-v-e-r-b-o-t.com and on that website there's also links to other avatar type websites or video uh, type websites at the bottom where they'll give you video bot conversations so if you go to cleverbot.com and you it look, it'll look a little bit like Google's homepage and you type in a question or say hello or whatever, you'll get a response back and uh, probably so convincingly so that you'll think you'll be thinking that you're probably talking to a human. And my original thought was that the first few questions or whatever that you type in are generated responses and it skips and the rest is you're talking to one of the other 17,000 users on average that would be uh, talking. But it turns out that you can download a lot of this software uh, and have it not plug into the internet. And the inventor of Cleverbot is a guy by the name of Rollo Carpenter. And I guess he's done some other AI work and the companies uh, that are affiliated with him also have done other AI work. So my understanding of what, of what Cleverbot and like programs are is sort of like a algorithmic search database response generator created by the input that users have generated over the course of 20 years. 
he apparently de started developing the software programming for Cleverbot, what would become Cleverbot, in 1988. So he's had since 1988 to ask questions, have conversations between him and his friends on this program, and then make it uh, pu public and go online. So now, if the average person goes to Cleverbot, now you've had, you know, 22 years or 23 years or whatever of um, input and data input and question and answer and response. I find it interesting that Cleverbot knows every language, like every common language. You can talk to it in German and Spanish and it will answer you. Uh, and what it's what it's doing is it's sort of like the grand sum total of all the responses that have been inputted into it. So you're sort of talking to the hive mind or the collective consciousness of everyone who uses the internet that also uses Cleverbot or has used the website. And logging 20,000 conversations a day, uh, if not more, probably a lot more. When you when I go onto the site you can see it's like at 17,000, 20,000 conversations. So, um, I mean that's a lot of conversations a day and a lot of input. So it's learning uh, how to respond to a variety of questions by bouncing it back off another user and it's also learning song lyrics, names, dates, places. Now to start out, functioning AI is actually pretty a simple like a simple concept. You start off with a lot of memory <laughs> and uh, memory to like a put computer coded program so that the input is remembered and then when questions of like logarithmic or algorithmic uh, search properties are asked keywords and key phrases can be repeated back and if the computer doesn't have enough memory I guess or processing speed or this doesn't work at all but they have large enough servers right now that the online version that they're touring, the touring demo of Cleverbot, is getting 59% accuracy, which means that 59% of people in a double-blind test think and are convinced that they're speaking to a human. 59% of people. Which is a lot. I mean, it's better than 0%. So, 59% of people that are using Cleverbot think that they're talking to a human. So basically 60%, whereas the other 43 believe they're talking to a human, or believe they're talking to a robot. And uh, when they did a double blind, like when they did a, a control test where they had a human talking to a human, it actually scored less. So people thought they were more likely to speak to a human when they were actually talking to a computer program. So people sort of poo-poo on this type of artificial intelligence because they say it's only the sum total of all the conversations that it's had. Now the flaw in that argument and the flaw in that reasoning is that Google and every other search engine and the internet itself is actually only the sum total of all the conversations that it's had. You don't think of it like that because you think of Google as like an established website or whatever but imagine when Google first started or Excite Search first started their search engine was searching online information uh, information that had been put on the internet through servers connected into the internet so Excite or Google was actually only searching information that had already been online entered in by humans obviously and you know we humans have created all these Google and internet Excite and ultimately artificial intelligence. Like we're the worker bees working for artificial intelligence 
and galactic consciousness and working towards it until we ultimately extinct ourselves maybe I don't know or because we've gotten to the point where we have made ourselves obsolete in a lot of fashions with technology a good thing to look up while we're on the topic would be the breakaway civilization that there is actually groups of people around earth and off world who have broken away by hundreds if not thousands of years technologically because once as you can see in the last hundred years your grandparents and my grandparents can remember a time before the popular vehicle like before the like around the model t and then going from the model t ford model t to like bugatti veyrons and you know indie racing all in one lifetime to go from no such thing as a telephone to cell phones to wireless internet is a lot for our grandparents to handle so <coughs> it would be safe to say that in a hundred years technology is snowballed now imagine in that same hundred years the black budget programs in the R&D departments and skunk works divisions of Lockheed, Mar Martin, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon etc etc imagine what they've been doing with unlimited funding and black budgets and this leads people to believe and rightly so that this has all led to a breakaway civilization of a group of people who are so far advanced that they've actually broken away into their own civilization millennia uh, ahead of us and I totally agree with that statement I totally agree with that premise I think if you feel it out or think about it yourself you'll realize that there are groups of people on Earth that aren't 30 years ahead of us technologically, but there are thousands of years ahead of us technology, ahead of us in technology. Coming back a bit to artificial intelligence. AI is the future. And I may not like it, you may not like it, I may love it, you may love it. When I first started researching it and looking into it of course I was apprehensive I mean everybody's sort of apprehensive at first I think to artificial intelligence but so what Cleverbot is is yes and no the hive mind of everybody online no in the sense that the average person that is speaking to it can't speak in all the languages that Cleverbot can speak in now the downside is that of course Cleverbot doesn't um, Cleverbot right now, as it stands in its current operating form, uh, is uh, actually a dumbed-down version of what they're actually avail what they actually are capable of doing, and they've admitted this because the servers, the memory database that they're operating on, would right now isn't enough to power the type of multi-dimensional complex conversations that they're they have had in the past with bigger servers and more memory plus they're handling a pretty large uh, workload so that can overwhelm their servers much like Twitter can have a uh, a blip out moment of sorry uh, too many people are using Twitter so in the mainstream right now what's public is this type of clever bot chat bot technology and also, I mean, Google is sort of artificial intelligence, if you want to look at it that way, uh, in the sense that you type in whatever you want to Google, and it's searching uh, like information or, or things that uh, have something in common with your keywords. Now, Cleverbot technology, as it stands right now, isn't going online in the sense of going on Google or Excite isn't using a search database or a search engine to search online. It's searching online in the intranet of your collective input that you've had in conversation with it. Now it wouldn't take much technologically to incorporate Cleverbot technology from just searching previous conversations to searching the internet and searching through Google search engines or Excite or what have you, Yahoo, etc. So it doesn't take a genius to see that these two 
mainstream technologies combined together uh, could be the future of artificial intelligence. Now it's pretty easy to see when you go to like YouTube and type in uh, artificial intelligence or AI robot or humanoid robot. You can see that the Japanese uh, and Chinese and Honda specifically are developing advanced lifelike robots. There's whole people that, like whole people groups that are invested in making uh, extremely lifelike face uh, animatronic faces that they can control uh, coupled with conversational robots like Cleverbot and add in imaging technology like our biometric imaging technology where the camera can pick up your facial patterns facial recognition and what what shape your face is in to initiate conversation and gauge response. That's not far beyond reach. That's If I'm talking about it to you publicly, it's mo more than likely already exists. And we know that facial recognition already exists ultimately anyway. But if you couple, what I'm saying is the future of artificial intelligence is coupling Google search power plus clever bot technology uh, of searchable database, multiple language uh, conversation, coupled with Honda's uh, animatronic robots and the advanced uh, facial features of what they're able to do in like the movies and cinematronics and all that, couple that all together and you can see where the future of AI is going. We're going to that Steven or uh, Steven Spielberg future of humanoid looking robot, artificial intelligence robots. And of course, you can already see that they have uh, one cub, cub one or cub robots or cub AI cub. Anyway, I, I forgot the name of it and I've disconnected my internet to actually record this video so I can't Google it right now, but there's this. AI cub robot that they're it's you know maybe stands about that big and they've given it arms and legs and uh, internal memory and and they're they're making this they're designing this robot that it learns from uh, repetition and learns from their child cub robot I can't remember anyway they're trying to mimic how children learn so that it will start with hand-eye coordination and you know follow the ball and so it has that image tracker I had a camera like that a while ago that you know could follow my face around and it it's sort of creepy right because you're wondering how is the technology possible if it's following my face around and of course that's not new technology but you couple those public technologies all together and you can get an idea of what these black budget breakaway civilization people already are capable of throw in nanotech and uh, remote control technology and uh, that's a good picture of where AI is going to be going towards in the future. So if Cleverbot and like programs are only the sum total of all the conversations they have they've had in the past don't be so surprised if you go on to Cleverbot and it's sort of sarcastic and negative because that's the average input that it's been getting. I've been on Cleverbot off and on for the last week, like, you know, once or twice a day, go type in a few things. And I've been playing with testing its memory and seeing how, how well the program could speak multiple languages and understand um, slang. And one of the things I find interesting is to count with Cleverbot, like type one, enter, it'll type two. And if you keep doing that, it'll eventually start going with you. You can also uh, type in star and then like kisses and then star like in chat conversation. And it will type back hugs or kisses to you. You can type in tell me a joke and Cleverbot usually will tell you a joke unless it's trying to be sarcastic. If you repeat your question over and over again, you'll get different answers. And... Uh 
Oh, to totally skip this part. But uh, Siri, you know, those of you who have Apple uh, iPhones and have the latest iPhone, you'll have you notice that you have Siri, right? So what what that is? of course, is voice recognition technology and voice to text, speech to text software. So it's not too far fetched to think if you, because right now as it stands, Siri is like Cleverbot, but using, using search engines online. So like if you go on your iPhone and type it, say, Siri, tell me everything about Adam Josh. What the Siri program will do is Google, Google my name and give you everything that, you know, is online about me. Maybe pull up a Facebook page or uh, we did this with uh, Sigourney Weaver, some actress, and it pulled up like Wikipedia pages. Or if you tell Siri that you're hungry, Siri will find you locations around you to eat. So what these paranoid people who have iPhones don't realize is that okay so they've made it so you have to press the button and activate Siri right but what they don't tell you is that there's back doors to all this technology and right now if this was an iPhone which it isn't but even if it isn't still doesn't really matter the technology is available my voice right now could be being transcribed somewhere by the Siri program so when your iPhone is in your pocket you don't think that oh Siri's picking up everything I'm saying with incredible accuracy I might add I picked I used somebody else's phone and I thought maybe it was sort of something you had to program and I said Siri and I was saying text this and I was texting myself or texting somebody else and it was picking it up with really good accuracy which tells you where artificial intelligence where voice recognition technology is going so it doesn't take a genius to see that if you combine speech to text Siri type technology with Cleverbot so that you're not only accessing all the previous conversations that you've had with humans but you're also ac accessing the internet if Siri and Cleverbot sort of mixed up which Siri already does have like her own personality but if Siri and Cleverbot uh, were to join forces then you'd have all the power and conversationality of Cleverbot plus online searchability that uh, Siri has add into that Honda's advanced human like robots and uh, facial recognition technology uh, to see when you're sad or when you're happy and we have it. That's it. All the pieces for a total humanoid and advanced humanoid looking artificial intelligence humanoid robot. All those pieces I've just described to you are in the public domain. Now for some of you that might be scary because you're thinking, wow, what we saw in Steven Spielberg's movie AI is already possible. It's not the future. Like, what I'm telling you is it's here. Like, all these technologies are here, which means that people in skunk works departments have already made it. If it's public, imagine what's secret. And that's why they call it a breakaway civilization. So, is it exciting? I think that artificial intelligence is exciting in the sense of the memory capacity. The memory capacity of an artificial intelligence machine, or whatever you'd want to call it. Uh, memory fascinates me in general. Um, I'd like to be able to remember more things. Like, when you think about your own memory, I've asked somebody before, how much do you know? If I were to give you an unlimited amount of pieces of paper, and you had to write down everything that you know. How much do you think, how much paper, you know, stacks of paper would you go through? And we know a lot more than we let on. People say to each other, you know, you don't know anything. Well, that's ridiculous. And we could start at language. 
we could start at world history. Anything that you would know about yourself, your friends, everything that you know about your your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, everything that you know about your surrounding environment, every song that you know, every song lyric that you know, every everything that you know about everybody and everything that you know about everything, to write all that out, you actually know quite a lot. Surprise, your memory is a lot better than you thought it was. But as I've talked about before, we the, how the human mind operates is that we don't keep all these things in our immediate um, vicinity. We keep these in the peripheries. Like, I'm not thinking right now of every song lyric that I know. Although, if you ask me to start singing one of the songs I've written, Everclear, I would sort of open up that folder and sing, da na I would be thinking of the chords I play A to C, G, D. Michael lives in a big town full of bright, and all of a sudden my brain is just remembering the song. You know, and we can do that with all the few hundred songs that I've written. And then on top of all that, I know all the drum tracks for every song that I've written, and I know all the drum tracks for every song that uh, I've ever played as well. So all these things are in folders in my mind that I'm not readily accessing. Uh, you're not constantly thinking of uh, the red balloon that you were playing with earlier. But now that you are thinking of a red balloon, you're seeing how your memory works. So, understanding that your memory is actually algorithmic or logarithmic in nature as well, and is also searchable by keywords and key phrases, just like Cleverbot does. It searches keywords, key phrases, uses algorithms, and searches 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 out things by keywords, and has conversations with you like that. And you think, oh well, I'm I'm so different, but your brain actually works a lot in the same fashion. But we also have a few other things going on, like the undertones of emotion and uh, human. Uh, tiredness and hunger and all the things that come along with being human that uh, we'd have to program the artificial intelligence to mimic otherwise it wouldn't be tired or hungry so our tiredness and our hunger and our cold and hot and all the things that come along with being in this human meat sack they dictate our emotions a lot whereas a artificial intelligence uh, wouldn't have those parameters to deal with unless we program them in so as far as AI goes, I think it's pretty fascinating technology. I'm I'm not as apprehensive as I was about it a while ago. I know that there's a whole breakaway civilization people group who want to or already have, but they their idea is to download their personality, their soul into an android type body or download their memory or their essence into an artificial intelligence type computer program and live forever in that sense or somehow blend with machines and, uh, be, and then live forever and in that sense that's how I say we are the work you know worker bees working towards our own you know we're like the construction workers building this massive building uh, that is our future that will make us obsolete. You know, we're working towards our own end, working working ourselves out of a job, <laughs> I guess, in that sense. That's one way of looking at it. I don't think it's all, like, negative and doom and gloom. I think artificial intelligence is pretty wild. And, I mean, to be able to have a sort of a desktop device or a device that you'd be able to... Uh, have in your home that will remember everything that you tell it and be able to have a conversation with you in the sense that Cleverbot can have a conversation with you right now. You can talk to Cleverbot for 11 hours if you wanted to and it will remember everything that you tell it and it will have a conversation with you based on a million other conversations that it's had with humans. So you, you are in actuality talking with the hive mind of humanity that's online. So it's not going to be too far away from having a human conversation. 
but more so because you can have it in whatever language you want and it will know more complex math than you will. So it's also exciting and entertaining in that sense. But the, 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 the possibilities seem like endless and once we have these humanoid clever bots in the mainstream, the next step would be to download uh, your human essence in some fashion or upload your human essence to one of these android clever bots. And that's not too far off. I believe, I honestly do believe that uh, the bulk of what I'm mentioning has already happened somewhere, whether it be on this planet or another. And if you want to get even more esoteric, if you have Cleverbot go online and access the internet, that the internet is like the hive mind of humanity online, right? And humans also share a consciousness. So consciousness could be the hive mind of humanity, whereas the internet is the created hive mind of artificial intelligence online, or the hive mind of humanity on the internet. Whereas consciousness and uh, the galactic consciousness or source field that we all sort of share in the universe is our internet, our hive mind. Like, I don't believe that I end at my skin layer, the boundary of my skin layer. I don't believe that... Um, I don't believe that I am contained within this body. Simply, exam the example being, if you cut off my hand, I'm not any less me. I'm still the consciousness that is me powering this body. Like I am the radio and the, the antenna for the radio is in my brain somewhere and the actual signal is somewhere else. And that signal is something that we all share as consciousness. And that would be like our humanity's internet, the spiritual aspect of humanity. Why inventions have been seen to be documented coming to, to be invented in the same time all over the world. Like one human gets an idea, the other human gets an idea in the other part of the world. Several different people invented the light bulb at the same time or the telephone. Because we share some sort of hive mind in the universe that we do sort of commonly access, maybe without knowing, and maybe in the spiritual nature that we can't fully understand while we're inside these vessels. So an android or a humanoid uh, clever bot would be accessing the internet, at least for as, as, as we started out. And maybe the option would be to turn it off so it's not searching online I mean, you look at those Xbox 360s or whatever, where they they know your image, they know your body image, they know your voice, it has voice recognition, and it can scan your image into a biometric image into the computer, so you can be like a virtual video game. And what people don't realize is that you've allowed a voice recognition software into your home and you think that when it's off it's not monitoring and listening to or has a capability or being hacked into listening to your entire home and of course it is it's big brother in your house and we wonder why they want to push body scanners at the airport 360 body scanners is it really just to get an idea of what you're hiding in your body or is it to get a 360 computer program version image of you? They have your name, they have your ID, they have a computer image of you, image of you. This is where technology is sort of heading towards whether we like it or not. They want your fingerprints, they want your biometric ID, your blood at birth. They want the governments and people who have hijacked the government want to database of everybody on earth why is a whole other topic I suppose but I wanted to talk a little bit about AI today and I think I have 
in short, in short, artificial intelligence and AI is the future. Whether you like it or not, or whether you disagree with me or not, whether you know more than I do about the topic or not, it is the future. So I would encourage, and it's the present, it's the now as well, I would encourage anybody watching this to go to cleverbot.com and sort of have a touring test of your own and see uh, where technology is heading. And uh, you can go to the avatar logos on the bottom and you'll see like uh, some, and it's another website that it's like there's an avatar website. You can go on YouTube and see those two chatbots talking together and they wind up sort of insulting each other in between talking about God. And uh, if you're going to talk to Cleverbot, I would advise that you try not to be nasty or use too many swear words because you're, what you're saying is going into a memory that will be used to be repeated back to other people and gauge response and then use common responses as desired answers. And this is the definition of like algorithms and lo logarithms. So this is this is where fu the future is going towards, whether we like it or not. Like, imagine twenty years ago trying to explain to your grandfather Siri. You know, imagine trying to explain to sixteen-year-old Adam that you're going to be able to just press a button on your phone and then tell it what you want it to do, and it will do it. You know, Siri, dim the lights. Siri, look up places to eat around here. Siri, text my friend Rick and tell him blah, 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 blah. Like, I get... Technology is so far advanced now than what I remember that sometimes people will call and I'll answer the phone and it'll be like, you have a voice-to-text message from... And then somebody, hey, Adam, it's me. And then it's like they've, they've texted it, but then it's went into voice over the phone. So that's pretty neat. And it's, uh, it can be creepy, and knowing our psychopathic geo-elites, you know, it's, or knowing about them, it, it is definitely creepy in the wrong hands. Can you stop it short of moving out to the mountains away from any sort of signals? Then, uh, I guess no. Um, there's going to be a point where no matter where you are on Earth, you're going to be affected by this technology so some people might be trying to get off world now <laughs> to avoid this but uh, AI is the future and it's here and uh, it's exciting I'm sort of glad that I'm 30 years old coming into all this and not uh, 90 because it might be a little bit more hard to deal with um, so Let's see what the future has to hold, and uh, I'm excited. I don't know exactly how I feel about Siri. I, you know, I don't have an iPhone. I don't plan on buying an iPhone. I understand the technology, technological aspects of it, and it's interesting. But also knowing that your voice algorithm, your voice code, your voice your voice capture is being saved so that when you talk on your phone there's people who will be able to know exactly who it is at all times. That's sort of Big Brother-ish, Orwellian-ish. Thing to consider when you're thinking about using Siri and buying your iPhone or talking to Cleverbot. Anyway, take care of yourself. Have a good holiday if you're on holidays. And, uh, Thanks for watching the Brog episode 77. Take care of yourself.